Hello everyone, it's stream time. Today we're going to be covering lakes and we're going to be doing all of that in the fantasy world style. Now if you want to follow along on today's stream, you can totally clone and edit this map. You'll find that pinned in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll find that in the video description. Now as always, whenever you're working on any kind of map, doesn't matter if it's a world, regional, whatever it might be, you need to set some rules. And one of the very first rules you should probably set is scale. And to do that, you turn on your grid, okay? And that each one of those cells is gonna represent a certain number of miles or whatever your metric is. So you could say that it's 200 square miles or 500 square miles. It's really up to you if you're very specific about how big your land masses are and how close each city and each point of interest is to each other, that's super important to you, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to be sticking to a scale. In this one I went, which is 500 square feet. Of course, when it comes to lakes or bodies of water like lakes and rivers, you might scale up just a little bit because probably at those larger, those kind of scales, it's really hard to see lakes or even rivers on uh, a map at that scale. So it's okay to blow it up a little bit to make your lakes just a little bit bigger. And when you're adding your lakes, by the way, what's super important is, is that you only need to show a lake unless it's somehow important in your campaign or your book or whatever it might be. You know, don't throw in a random lake just because you want some lakes there. I recommend that you throw one in because it's important. An event takes place there, whatever it might be, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. Once you've set that grid, the next one is to set your climate zones. And I just make a little climate zone guide by using the grid and the center line is the equator and then going up and down are the different types of climate zones and that's going to be really really helpful to establish that right away because then you can figure out where each biome is going to be because some biomes exist in certain climate zones while others do not so it's super important to have that what's really great about lakes is they can be found anywhere when it comes to earth physics they can be found anywhere in any uh, altitude in any climate zone it doesn't matter so lakes awesome so cool that you can find them anywhere and you don't have to worry so much but of course there are certain types of lakes that can be found in certain places the climate zone is actually if you're clone and edit the map and you're following along look in that right panel and you'll notice that there's under objects a list of objects I've labeled it and there's, it's also locked. Just make sure that you click it and then click the opacity, set it to whatever you want it to be. It should be set to zero because that way I can hide things in and out. Okay. So that's how you would find that. And I also have a guide like this on my, um, on my profile that you can use and apply it to kind of any map that you want. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off for now, or at least down to a lower opacity. And I'm going to turn the grid off for right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about kind of the first type of lake. It's kind of a common one, and it's called a tectonic lake. And as you probably guessed, it has a lot to do with plate tectonics. Okay, and what I like to generally do is I before I put down a lake, I like to take the path tool and then kind of make the shape of the lake first. And you can use whatever kind of path you want. And that the point of that is just so that you don't have to keep using the mask tool or the path tool or a texture and keep doing it over and over again. If you make the general outline shape of the lake first with a path, then you can just rotate it, move it around, and it's editable, right? So it's, you can edit it. It makes it easier. So path tool is a great start, okay? Now with plate tectonics, with specifically these lakes, is there are shifts in plate tectonics that kind of change the, the elevation of the land around it, and then it fills up with either rainwater or snow melt, or if there's a water source from a river that comes from the mountains. So it's going to be um, basically where te plate tectonics have taken place. And one of the most dramatic places that you can see the visual effect with your own eyes at that scale is mountain ranges, right? A lot of mountain ranges are made with this process called subduction, and it causes plates to buckle and fold up, creating mountain ranges. So that's where the most dramatic places that you can kind of find plate tectonics. So it's a great place to put your lakes. It's not the only reason why it's a great place to put lakes is because lakes also get, might get their headwaters from somewhere in the mountains, in a mountain lake or a volcanic lake somewhere, a crater lake somewhere. So it's always nice actually to have your lakes near mountains or 
wherever. It doesn't really matter, but that's kind of the easiest one on putting your, uh, where to put your tectonic lake. And I'll show you how I go about um, doing this. So I'll go ahead and remove, I think this is add mode, and we're gonna remove all this stuff right here. And I'll go ahead and make the lake again so you can see how I do it. There are multiple ways that you can do water on your map. And one of the big things that determines it is your mask effects. If you have crazy mask effects with waves and the outer shadow and all that stuff, you might not want to use the add or the subtract mode of the mask tool to make your water because the mask effects might make it look weird, especially if you're making rivers or tiny lakes and there's they're not very big. So mask tool, I'll go ahead and show you how I use that is I'll go ahead and take the circle brush and I'll scale it down. If you hold down the shift key and use your mouse scroll wheel, you can control um, the mask and you wanna make sure you're set to subtract mode. And if you kind of hover over it, you'll see you can also uh, shortcut key D over to it. And what I'll do is I'll take a relatively small brush size around three and you can make the outline like this and I'm putting it close to the mountains. Once the outline is done, then I can go in and make it a little bit larger and then fill it in. So think, make the outline first and then fill it in. Okay. And you can also use the bucket tool for that as well. It's up to you because the scale is so, so small. I don't even need to use the bucket tool. All right. Now that I've kind of made the shape of the lake, there's a couple things that you can do here. You can show that the headwaters that there's maybe water, snow, or rain melt coming from the mountains. So you can use the mask tool and I'm gonna use the smallest brush. Okay, and then coming from the mountains, I'll maybe have some water sources coming from the mountains and then going into the lake. Now that's one way that a tectonic lake can be filled up. It can also be filled with a lot of water. So if you want, if you're specific about it and you know the history of that lake and you want it to be where there's a lot of rain, then put it in your temperate zone because there's a lot of rain in your temperate zone. But if your water's coming from maybe snow melt, then it's okay to kind of put it maybe closer to the equator or whatever. It's okay. It really just depends. Now, what I also like to do when I'm throwing in a lake is I want to throw in maybe an island or two just because, hey, it can look really dramatic by throwing in maybe a little island and then maybe there's a location on the island in your map. What works really well in fantasy whenever you're making anything, especially with lakes, is, is that it's a mix between the more realistic and the more fantastical. When you have the fantastical clashing against the normalized, then it really pops out, doesn't it? And that's what how you make a dramatic map, is combining both realistic elements, which could be scale and whatnot, and where your mountain ranges are, and then the more fantastical part, where you have maybe a mushroom forest or whatever it might be. When it comes to a lake, you can add some fantastic elements to the lake, right? An island is not a fantastical element, but it's a great element to add in, and you can just put a little POI on top of there. It could be a marker, an icon, whatever you want, might want it to be. And I'm going to also change a little bit of the edge because if you notice, this is kind of a really oblong lake. I'll just go ahead and change it just a little bit so the shape is a little bit more interesting instead of just that blob. And what's also really nice to do is because there's a wetland, you can also throw in with the add mode and kind of just break it up into pools as well, multiple lakes. becomes more interesting when you throw in a couple. Just make sure that when you kind of delete, you're getting rid of the mass of it. There we go. So I have a couple lakes here. And you can either delete all that fuzz right there, or it could be a little bit, but it's a wetland. And we in last week's stream, we did wetlands or swamps. And it's, lakes are a great place where to put your wetland, and it could be just a part of it in general. All right, let's go over to our next one. That's tectonic. So just remember the certain parameters. Put them close to the mountains because, hey, that's where the plate tectonics is most visible. So always a good place to put them. You don't have to. You could place them anywhere you want. But near a mountain also makes it dramatic, right? You have these tall mountains and then a lake. And it allows you to do things like overlap. You'll notice right here that I have a mountain range right here that's overlapping that lake, giving it more drama, more depth, okay? So lakes look nice 
and I usually put them, at least the tectonic ones, by my mountain ranges, but you can put them anywhere that you like, right? Let's go with the next one, a glacier lake. And as you kind of guessed, a glacier lake is usually found at the base of a glacier, okay? Now, glaciers can be found anywhere on Earth, but when it comes to the ones that are furthest away from the ocean, they're higher up in altitude. So if you're not going to have your glacier in a polar region, you're going to have it somewhere in between your two temperate zones, then I recommend that you have that lake be up in the mountains because that is where glaciers take Take, take place as well as up high up in the mountains where there's consistent snow, consistent ice and frost. Okay. But because it's so much easier to place it in a polar region, because it is hard to, sh to show a river or a lake in the mountains, the scale probably wouldn't even work. Look at the size of those mountains. So instead, I recommend you just move it to the polar region where there is consistent snow, but maybe close to the temperate zone where it can kind of thaw enough to create the glacial lake. So polar region, some overlapping into the temperate zone. That's where you'll find your glacier lakes. And they're not too hard to put together. Again, I've made the shape with the path tool and I'll just actually move it over to here like this. Let's go ahead into it. And I'm gonna move this path right here over to here. And this is where I'll have my, my glacier. And last time, what we used was the mask tool. Let's go use a texture instead. And what I'll do is I'll just end up painting in whatever this color is right here. So I've, instead of using the mask effects, I've just painted in my shoreline, that light color there. I'm gonna do the same thing for this glacier for kind of a smooth transition. It's set to the FG layer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right in like this because those blue, but those right there are going to be like a type of mesa. Well, actually I think they're karsts. And what's really cool about those karsts is that you can change the color to them and make them blue and they work great for glaciers or ice spikes or whatever it might be. But all I kind of did was just take that texture and kind of added the same thing here. It looks like I have to do a little bit more blending and I'll drop the opacity here. There we go. And there you have your, your glacier lake. Just make the shape with the path tool. And I used textures instead of using the mask tool. And really that's up to you. Remember what defines whether you're gonna use a texture, a path, or a the mask tool is gonna to be your mask effects. If you're not sure what I'm talking about my mask effects, you'll find them here in advanced settings. You can turn the mask effects on and off. I've turned mine off because it can cause a little bit of lag, especially when you're streaming. So that's basically a glacier lake, not complex, right? Just make sure that you have your glaciers, which is just an icy mountain, really. You can just look at it that way. And remember the, the easiest place to put them is gonna be in, in between your polar and temperate zones, but it's okay if you put them somewhere else. Just make sure they're up in the mountains or a place where there's consistent snow and there's like thawing and melting, okay? So that's what's important there. Let's do next a desert lake. Now, I'm sure you've heard of a desert lake by a different name. It's actually called an oasis. And oasis generally get their water from underground rivers which are called aquifers okay and they actually have an intimate relationship with rivers as well so if you do uh, have an oasis somewhere it's okay to also have a river somewhere off in the distance because what happens is is that fault lines and then water forms and it kind of travels down and it kind of goes to where maybe there's a depression in the land so an oasis gets most of its water from underground okay Obviously, there can be some rainfall, but it's usually not enough to accumulate to create a hole like this, but you totally, it can be involved in that. And I just put a river down here to kind of show. Here I've used the subtract mode of the mask tool. I'll go ahead and remove this and show you where to put it. And I want to mention that <laughs> more than likely, you would not, the size of the Oasis of the Oasis probably wouldn't be that big. And there's a specific reason for that. It's because um, again, a oasis is going to be, you're, the lakes, you're not going to see at this kind of scale. 
and that's okay. But you definitely want to show your lakes, especially if your players are going there. So it's okay to go a little out of scale a little bit. And if you're not sure on the shape, you can use the texture itself as a guide. I'll give you an example. So I've used this sand texture here and you don't know what the shape that you want to make. That's okay. You can just use kind of the outlines. I'll go ahead and change the width here a little bit. There we go. You can change and um, you can use the path to kind of use the negative space to kind of create the shape that you want. So use that as a guide. Now that you've masked, now that you've kind of added the shape, you can go in with the subtract mode of the mask tool. I've set it to one, it's gonna be small. In fact, we can go with two, and I'll just kind of put in the subtract mode of the mask tool. I'll go wherever the path is. Just stay within the path, think of it as like operation, right? Make sure the whole thing's filled in, and then all you have to do is delete the path. There you go, there's your oasis. Now, one thing I recommend, um, is is that usually there's a lot of vegetation near an oasis because it's a water source and plants are going to cling to that water source so it doesn't hurt to take maybe a grass texture make sure it's set to the right layer I'm gonna set it to FG and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint a little bit of green texture around the edges of it just so that I'm showing that hey there's some vegetation there and you know just because it's the desert. It's nice to throw in a palm tree or two and I'll make set the palm tree down in a way where there's some overlap going on. So I'll look for where the palm tree is in the catalog. And this is where you have to think about scale. If you want the palm tree to be more visible and you don't mind it being a little out of scale, then scale it up. If you prefer it to be much closer to scale, then scale it down a lot more. And you can use the mountain range as a guide, right? The mountains can help you with scale. If a tree is this big and this is how big a mountain is, you're gonna say, wait a second, that's not right. So scale it down. Now, if you wanted to stick to a really accurate scale or very close to it, a tree would probably be this big. But because you want to actually see the stamp and you want to have some drama to it and you don't mind exaggerating this location a little bit, then throw down a couple. And I want to make sure that they're overlapping. So if you notice carefully, these trees are overlapping where that water is, giving it a sense of depth. Okay, so Oasis, not hard to make. And just use whatever sand texture, use the negative space around it. That is wherever the line work is taking you. Put a little bit of green around it. And also, because it's so much shallower and it's away um, from kind of any kind of runoff from like a mud or anything like that, you can use a more brighter kind of blue. You can use a brighter blue if you want. Just make sure it's set to that BG layer and throw it on. Like you can say boost, let's go to advanced settings, go to color. Let's make it a lot brighter. I'll just throw it on here. There you go. And this is a good time to mention how to show depth in your lakes. By the way, if you wanna show that your lake is shallow, like the Oasis, then you are gonna to wanna to use a lighter texture. If you wanna show depth, in a body of water, you want to use a darker texture because it's harder for sunlight to get down to, to deeper depths, right? It takes longer. So of course, it's going to be darker. So when I apply that texture to it, I want to make sure that I bring the size down. And generally, I'll just put it in the center to show depth. So if I go like this, and I'll put in a little bit in the center just to show depth. And you can do that with any lake. Just remember, the deeper it is, the darker it is. That's how easy it is. Not too complex, right? All right. Let's talk. Let's do a couple more. Let's do a volcanic lake. And if you're not certain what a volcanic lake is, we'll go with a specific one. It's called a volcanic crater lake. And basically what happens is, is a volcano will blow off its top violently. And then over time, that volcano will become inactive. And then it will fill with snow melt and rainwater. And then that's what's referred to as a volcanic crater lake. There's one in the state that I live in in the United States. It's really cool. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what it looks like first. And then I'm going to show you how to make it because these making a mountain lake is super hard and there's an, a method to it. And I'll go ahead and move it off to the side and I'll break it all down for you on how I make 
mountain lakes, or volcanic lake, if you wish. So first, let's start with breaking down what is in this group. You're going to choose a couple mountains to be in the foreground layer. You make sure those are several layers up. They're on layer two. Next, I'm going to use the path tool. I'm going to use hard light, and I'm going to use the flat or solid line, and I'm going to use whatever color blue that I want to use, okay? That's going to be a layer below whatever layer those mountains are at. So if these are at layer two, you're going to want to move them to layer one, right? And then these mountains are going to want to be a layer below that. What we're doing is creating a little, we're encasing that blue path with mountains so that it looks like I'm creating a crater, right? So, and I've made the water a little see-through there using hard light. And then there is your mountain right there. So just think moving forward, going back. Mountains in whatever arrangement that you want in the front. Put that layer two, three, whatever. Path tool. Make the shape that you want. Then put that a layer below the mountains, right? Below the mountains in the front. Then you want to make another settings of mountains. Put them in the back. You can do all kinds of things with it too. You can make those mountains in the background a little bit darker if you want, just to make it look like they're further in the distance. It's ent entirely up to you. Be creative. But that is how simple it is to kind of make a mountain or, or volcanic lake. Once you've kind of assembled that together, then you can scale it to whatever size that you want and put it in the mountain ranges wherever you want. So I'm going to copy and paste it open up my mountains, paste it in, and then I can place it kind of wherever I wherever I want it to be in the mountains, okay? So you can have it over here, or you can have it be over here somewhere, you can have it be over here. Just make sure that this group, I would group it and label it whatever you want. I would totally recommend that you absolutely set it to the same layer that your mountains are in. So the mountains are set to one, right? And then your mountain lake is also, group is also set to layer one. This way you can go in like this and move it and put the lake wherever you want, right? Because now it's been built and it's gonna follow the specific layer order within the fantasy world style. I wanna go ahead and put the lake here for now, okay? Because I just think it looks nice there. So we'll put it there. The other thing you can do to make a mountain lake or a crater lake is to use an actual crater itself, okay? And this one, what I recommend doing is scaling it up first so you can see it and then selecting that same path that you used before. We're gonna bring the path size down a little bit. Let's just make sure, see how big it is first. Mm. Oh, and it needs to be a layer above the crater, don't forget. Let's bring the scale down a little bit, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and just fill it in. And the way that this works is, I wouldn't fill in the entire crater. You wanna show some depth. So what, I, what you can do is just go like this. Put it closer to the center like this, make sure you fill it all the way in. All right, now if you feel like there's too much to fill in, just scale it all down a little bit, okay? Oops, that's an error there. Just scale it down a little bit. That's all you have to do is just scale it down and then it'll be easier to fill up. So I'll go ahead and place the shape there. If you don't like the shape, you can also rotate it and move it. That's the beauty of using the path tool. It's now, you can now edit it. Now that that's done, I'm, you might want to select the crater and change the blend mode to normal or luminosity so that that way it picks up whatever layer is beneath it. And then of course you'll group, create group. I'm going to call it crater lake. And then you can just move it anywhere that you want on the map. Okay, so that's the other way to make a crater lake. All right, so super cool, right? Not too complex, super easy to make, right? I like it, fun stuff. So now you know that one. All right, there is one more left, and that is an oxbow lake, okay? An oxbow lake is generally, or actually it's always, an old part of a river, okay? And what I really like about oxbow lakes is their shape. It has the shape of like, the bow that an ox would carry, you know, an ox bow. 
So I'll go ahead and turn on it real quick and I'll show you where to kind of put everything, how I put it together and whatnot. So one of the first things is, is you have to establish where the old river used to be. And what I'll do is I'll take the path tool and I'll turn the path tool on. Oops, let's go over here and show the Oxbow Lake. Make sure it's set to 100%. And what I'll do is I'll actually make where the old river was using the path tool, right? So that's where the river is. Now for the Oxbow Lake, make sure that there are very noticeable meanders. A meander is the curve of the lake, okay? The curvature of the lake. If you're not sure, Oxbow Lakes are created when the flow of a river is changed due to erosion over time. And an old, a river, will, the old section of the river will dry up or, and then it will create a depression and it will fill up with rainwater. Okay. That's how an oxbow lake is formed. So I'm going to use the mask tool for this. I'm going to stick with a small shape and it's going to look again, much like an oxbow. So here's the shape that I'm going to do right here. And where the, it gets that shape is because the meandering part of it, right? So that's a deeper part and then it fills up with rainwater. That's your oxbow lake. So my suggestion is the best place to put an oxbow lake is not far from a river because likely the river that we see now is the river as it changed over time and the old part dried up and then created an oxbow lake. Really, that's it. <laughs> not too complex. Just create the old river shape, then find a meander, and then subtract mode or paint it or whatever you might decide to use, the path tool, whatever. That's the beauty of Incarnate. There's many different ways to make uh, parts of your map, and that's what's so cool about it. There's not one way or a wrong way to go about doing it. That's up to you, right? So super easy stuff. That is lakes. So just kind of quick review. Make the shape with the path tool. Once you've figured out the location, the shape that you want it, you've rotated the path around, use the subtract either the subtract mode of the mask tool, assuming that the add that your land is made with the add mode of the mask tool, as it is in this map. Once you've done that, you can also use the path tool or use the texture. It's up to you. You can remove the path because you don't need the shape anymore. And then depending on what kind of lake it is, you can add your details to it, whether it's islands, maybe there's a forest around a lake. It's a great thing to do with a lake is to add a forest around it. If it's an oasis, throw in some palm trees, okay? If it's a bigger lake, a much bigger lake, throw in that island, right? That can look really nice. If it's a glacier lake, just remember to include some glaciers. You know what I used? I just used karsts they're green and i just changed them to blue to create my glacier right they're your mountain lake and your oxbow lake okay well hey that is it thank you so much everybody i hope you found this useful there are definitely more types of lakes than these but hey those are the ones that are gonna i think are the most easiest to identify on a map so hey uh just a quick one quick announcement no stream next week holidays are coming up so i'll be taking that stream off Sorry about that, but we'll kick right back to our normal schedule again starting next month, next year, actually, next year. And I am looking forward to that. Please let me know what kind of streams you want to see in the future, what kind of content you want to see. I'm all ears, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe and healthy. Merry map making. And I'll see you all in a couple weeks. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen.